I'm here at GCAP 2019 at the Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Center. I'm joined by Manami Matsume and Alex Aniel uh, from Brave Wave. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, do you mind, uh, I guess, to open, uh, sort of speaking a little bit to uh, who you are and why you're here at GCAP? My name is Alexander Aniel and I am the co-founder of Brave Wave Productions and the uh, Japan Business Development Manager for Limited Run Games. Cool. And I've come here to GCAP on invitation from uh, the Australian games industry uh, due to my ties in the video game music uh, sector. I am the music So my name is Manami Matsumae. I am a composer. Uh, Matsumae-san, in your talk you spoke about uh, some of the technical limitations uh, when you started your career in, in game composing. Um, those limitations meant that you focused on the melody, um, but in, I, I suppose, more recent times, that's fallen out of favor compared to uh, more ambient music. Um, how did you sort of maintain your style without losing relevance in, in the game composition uh, industry, I suppose? Yeah, indeed. Uh, I think in, in, there was a time in the Japanese game music industry when there was a very high demand for ambient music. And I think that had become a big boom in and of itself. Uh, and as a result, for people like me who were very melody focused in our approach to composing music, uh, there was a time when really there was no work for us and there was no work for me to do. And you know, I did wonder if, if you know, faced with this existential crisis, um, if, if the industry had changed for good. But it turns out that uh, things kind of come back in full circle. Uh, there seems to be once again a demand for very melodic sounding music. And I think uh, the biggest example of that would be with the game Shovel Knight. And in that music, you know, harkens back to a lot of uh, what we had back in the day. You also mentioned in your talk that composers would uh, be brought in very late to the development cycle when it was sometimes 50% or 80% com uh, complete. Uh, that was earlier in your career, but more recently with indie titles, um, it happens earlier on. What are some of the challenges uh, with being brought into a game's development earlier on uh, compared to later on in the cycle? The two largest differences, uh, the first, if you're involved in the project halfway through development and going forward, uh, the game has uh, been solidified and has become concrete to a certain extent. And developers are likely to have a better grasp of the kind of vision that you know, they want to have executed within the game. So that makes it easy to make music in some respects. Uh, however, uh, if you're involved from the very beginning, you know, that can be tough in the sense that you know, things, are, things are subject to change and the developers might not truly know what they want until a little later on in the process. But that said, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to have discussions and influence in the uh, in the production process when you're in there from the very beginning and a lot of your own input you know might might lead in, might lead to the game taking you know certain going in a certain direction as well when you started your career game composing was uh, more exclusive to professionals in the field I suppose but now the equipment is more affordable uh, anyone can compose game music uh, what are some of the differences between a professional and an amateur composer in, in your view yeah so I think uh, you're right compositional composition equipment and software have become a lot more affordable these days, uh, even the less experienced can take up the mantle of a game composer. However, I think I, what, what sets someone like me apart from someone who's an amateur is that communication is a very big part of the equation. It's important to be able to communicate well with the development team and kind of understand what they want, what their intentions are, and being able to read you know, what, what, what they want to do. I think an amateur composer may not be as well versed in such a social kind of skill. And you know, I, I've experienced uh, this my firsthand myself where you know, there are young composers who are very talented, but you know, their communication skills weren't up to par and that did them no good. And I guess to close out, Alex, can you speak a little bit to um, what is Brave Wave and what you set out to do uh, with the company? So it was Mohammed who came up with the idea. Right, okay. He had this dream of working with a lot of his favorite Japanese game composers. 
but he didn't know how to speak Japanese. And most of these Japanese game composers don't speak English that well. So he initially needed an interpreter and a translator. And we knew each other uh, beforehand, so he asked me to take care of some of these discussions. So being the go-between, I developed relationships with people on both sides, and uh, including Manami, Manami-san. And uh, it turns out that even after those initial pet projects were finished, Mohammed had more uh, aspirations uh, regarding what he wanted to do with these composers. He wanted to make more albums, do more collaborations. So I told him that, you know, if you're going to do to some degree of professional work with these composers, you have to have uh, a company in order to make this professional and official even, I would say. But he wasn't able to start the company on his own, so I decided to help him out and do it for him from, from Japan, from Tokyo. And that's how the idea was born. And it's kind of grown, you know, over the years. We, we work with multiple artists. We've released a number of albums and we've worked with a lot of uh, large and recognizable game publishers like Capcom, uh, Koei Tecmo, uh, Sega especially. So we, we've kind of become this label slash agency slash, um, let's put a good word, label, agency, and I guess go to when people in the West want to get in touch with old school and new school uh, game music composers, especially from Japan. Cool, thank you both so much for your time. Thank you so thank much. You.